But uh, the facts, as I understand them, and from my experience and the experience of people around me, suggests that these circles are here because they are trying to get us to rise to meet our obligations as human beings on this planet. And it's all about responsibility. They're helping us to take responsibility for our actions, get us to be good citizens of the planet because everything that's happening down here that we're doing to the planet is all having an energetic repercussion elsewhere in the universe. Everything we do down here is sending out shockwaves throughout the universe and at some level they are interacting and influencing what other people are doing elsewhere. So you have a lot of consciousness uh, around the planet at the moment looking at how we are going to develop, where we are going to go in this new stage of evolution because we are ready to make that jump and we're either going to make the jump positively or we're basically going to perish. It's one or the other. This is the last, this is the eleventh hour. And so the, the circles are here with the information, pumping information to the natural systems of the earth, interacting with natural organisms like human beings, and they're giving us a chance to actually wake up and realize what it is that we're doing. And I know it sounds very simplistic, but that really is it. Uh, and it's, a, it's simplistic, but yet it's a very, very important message, because if we don't get this right, we're gone. Uh, as the Hopi once uh, said, you know, we're the ones we've been waiting for. You know, don't expect anybody else to come up and fish us out of this problem. We have been given the opportunity and the tools with which to uh, to wake up, and now it's up to us to apply these tools. And the tools are all there in the circle design. You just have to go and play with them. So, would you say that uh, these um, celestial markings bring hope to humankind that you know? Uh, but you know, there could be a better future. Absolutely. But we have to create that future. They're not going to provide it for us. They're giving us an idea, a mirror of what to expect. And if we like what we see, then we should strive for that. You know, they're almost giving you a, a sense of perfection, of beauty, of, of a, a system based on love and fundamental responsibility. But we have to want it badly enough to actually achieve it. They're not going to, it's not, they're not going to do it for us. Uh, the circles by themselves aren't going to do anything other than just activate things and once you attach yourself to the design, the design being to unlock parts of you becomes a relationship, a back and forth relationship. Uh, as I call them, the keys of activation, uh, which once you uh, give permission for them to work with you, they'll start opening up bits and pieces of you. And once you open up bits and pieces of yourself and you connect the dots, so the more the keys will start coming. But uh, you're the ones who have to do all the work. Well, so it should be, really. Exactly. I mean, that's the only way human, human beings learn. It's through trial and error, but the only way to solve our own problems is for us to deal with those problems. Absolutely. You know, we have to uh, apply the instruction manual and actually uh, you know, fix the model ourselves, you know, tune the carburetor ourselves. It isn't going to be magically done for us by somebody else. So somewhere in the past, the, the manual on how to survive civilization, human civilization, was lost, and now we have to sort of refine that and, and sort of reconnect and... Yeah. And, sort of, and progress from there? Well, it's funny actually you say that. Uh, reconnect comes from a Latin word called religio, which is where the word religion comes from. And it's funny how you know, we've sort of given our power away to connect uh, with the invisible universe, which is what always stimulated our ancestors, you know, how they were able to get information from other levels of reality to a system down here on the, the terrestrial plane. And now we use religion uh, as a middleman to help us connect with you know, God in the biggest sense of the word. And we, to a certain degree, we give enough power away to somebody else. We give enough power away to a middleman, and uh, it ain't working. No, no, not when you use it for other means. Yes, I mean it be, it's become a system of control, and mm. uh, but that's part of the human experiment. Where, um, you know, for the last four thousand years, we've undertaken an experiment to give our power away to the few who've controlled many, and the experiment is now over. And this happens every four thousand years, like clockwork. Uh, we, as a consciousness, undertake an experiment to ch to experience something. Uh, between 8,000 and 4,000 BC, for example, or should I say, no, 6,000 to 2,000 BC, uh, we were experimenting with the female principle. We honoured and worshipped the female principle. I'm not, I'm not just talking about worshipping women. I mean, men were doing it too. We were worshipping the lunar cycle in nature, and we worked with that cycle in order to maintain a balance of existence on Earth. Once we learned that, and we experienced that, we decided to do the inverse, which is to give our power away. Uh, so the shaman becomes the priest who takes over the control uh, of the tribe and begins to control the tribe because they become the, uh, the center of attention, the, uh, the ego, uh, and the, uh, in, a, in a sense, the, uh, the star, you know. And today we have this wonderful culture. And talking of a star, talking of a star, 
Um, <laughs> Well, it's been a dismal failure, this uh, 4,000 year experiment. Well, it hasn't, because it's the experience that you have to remember. Uh, don't attach the judgment to it. Okay. Because what you've learned out of this experience is that it doesn't work. It brings with it an unbalanced way of living, where we give away our control to other people to do the thinking for us. And that's how we ended up in this disaster. That is the experiment, and this is the experience. So no experience is ever lost. So now, we as souls know how, what it means to give our power away, Chances are we're not going to do it again. So this is why we're now ready to go to another level of existence, which is now why we're in the middle of all this chaos. We feel that something needs to change, and the powers that be who have held on for this experience for two and a half, well, for four thousand years, know the time is up, and they're going to hang on for their life. And you can see today that they are trying to their best to make sure that oh, yes. they retain power, but it's falling apart. And do we know what the next experiment will be then? Yes, the uh, concept is that we're going to match. Uh, head and heart into harmony, in alignment, and we're going to have a fusion between male and female principles, so you have perfect balance. And it will also be uh, an age of knowledge, where we actually use the knowledge to further the greater benefit of the common good. That's where we're trying to get to.